This week's Corona question is the following. Rose Cameron, <laughs> what is the future of capitalism? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, nice for something completely different, right? <laughs> um, you know, whoo! Um, I think that really... <laughs> it took you one hour and two minutes to get to this damn question? Exactly. Did I talk that long? Sorry. There's a free therapy. Um, Wait till you get the invoice. Uh, <laughs> here, here. So I think the future of capitalism, um, it has become so dirtied by uh, a, a recent president, the, the association, um, that now we're just going to talk about entrepreneurism, right? Uh, that's that's what it's really all about. But what it is also saying is the importance of local, right? And yeah. how much uh, we don't want to be dependent on large, unsustainable, but local and sustainable has a uh, has really been driven home during COVID because these long supply chains that wrap halfway around the world. I'm actually seeing in our business um, that people, uh, large corporations, are pulling back their ordering process by two to three months because they need that time to deal with the supply chain that is just bending under the weight of everything that's happening in the world right now. So local is going to become huger than it's been before. And we all of those sustainability conversations are really happening right now and a greater collaboration between major vendors than I've ever seen before in my life. And I've been doing this now for almost 30 years. So I yeah. After hearing Rose's story yesterday and your story yesterday, I've got to turn around and say, Donnie, what's the future of capitalism? <laughs> <laughs> I love oh, it. that. Yeah, that that is a that is a great question. And I thought about that for for a little bit. I think there is a great future since if we make the changes needed that are needed to be made. Right now, people want to be part of something bigger than themselves. Right. And if we can really tap into that, then yeah, the future is great. If we can earn the respect and earn that respect of our people, the future is great for it. But if we continue with the way capitalism has been in the past, it's going to die. There has to be changes. And if we make those changes, it will be a great thing to be a part of. Okay. I did, I did homework. And the best way I'd like to start is just to remind people what the definition of capitalism is. Okay. So here's my little homework. So capitalism is an economic system based on the private ownership of the means of production and their operation for profit. Central characteristics of capitalism include capital accumulation, competitive markets, a price system, private property, and the recognition of property rights, voluntary exchange, and wage labor. Okay, so I share those things because I think that we tend to see, you know, the the whole idea of um, capitalism is a dirty word in many cases. By the way, I love the fact that we actually have a soundtrack to this one. It is. I know it's so weird. I don't. That think I think is. I'm guessing is a Skype, as an incoming Skype. I don't have Skype. <laughs> or something. But that was great. So anyway. So Soundtrack. Thank you. The soundtrack of our lives. So I think capitalism can get a dirty word because they think of it as that first part is that accumulation of profit. But I think it's the back part that we have lost sight of in that definition, which is the which is competitive markets, the recognition of property rights, voluntary exchange and wage labor. Look, I, you know, I think everything can be taken to an extreme, but the premise of capitalism for me at least, is something that is pure and true and that is the, the foundation of our future success. Capitalism doesn't have to be selfish. So capitalism can, again, leaning into what we just talked about, can provide joy, can provide inspiration, can open up places to expand markets. So think about the do-it-yourself, the creatives, all those, those people out there, if we didn't have a capitalistic market, they might be forced into doing something that they didn't want to do, that they weren't getting paid a fair wage. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, I get, are, is the world perfect? Is capitalism perfect today? No. But is the ideal of it the right one? In my opinion, yes. And I think that, again, my hope is that coming off of the pandemic, 
that we start to recognize again what's really truly important and we can sort of refocus our energies on those i think most important components of what makes a capitalistic society strong and healthy and actually supportive and in a growth environment well i, I do see it as this the the uh, the you know, the labor force that is coming up they they're expecting they're almost looking at your organization and they're wondering um, what the so what factor is, right? So we're making money, so we're making products, so we're doing this. Well, so what? What, what are we making that for? For people on Wall Street to, to just you know, fatten that account? Or again, this business with a purpose, conscious capitalism that essentially says, yes, we are making money for our investors, but here's also what we're doing. We're contributing back to the communities. We're doing this with that. And so I think that the, the employee base, the labor base, the resource is almost demanding organizations to contribute as much as they are consuming in their particular marketplaces. So I do believe that the future of capitalism is going to be the rigor of business with the heart that matters. And I think that that particular piece uh, is important. You know, the, the, the interesting aspect is um, as the leaders are coming in, I do think that you're having more of a shift um, uh, in, into, into leadership, but, but there's also this uh, real struggle um, because at the end of the day, we still need to have positive accountability. Now, old school would have been accountability. New school is sort of positive accountability. But if you are, um, if you are overly employee centric, then essentially you will become a nonprofit or in your words, you will disappear. And so I think that we have to have for the sustainability, scalability, survivability of the organization, there has to be appropriate capitalism that's going to drive that. But I think, again, we need to have that conscious capitalism, that rigor of business with a heart. And then we need to have that purpose of when we make this amount of money, what are we doing with it that has a uh, a deeper impact back to society instead of just filling the coffers. Future of capitalism is it will run as it always has. The rich will get richer, the poor will get poorer. Well, I think the capitals are going to stay at the front of sentences and that uh, there may be a fall off in capitals later on. That's what I think. I'm going to go ahead and, and second everything that's been said so far, which is I think it'll continue to uh, to cause the, the challenges that it's causing. And at some point that will be too much and we'll, we'll have to see what pops up to replace it. What's the future of capitalism, for God's sake? It's obvious. It's the Jaffe coin. What else could it be? Oh, the, what a the, the, what a good answer! Wait a second. Let's let's extend the show. Let's talk. A, let let's. There it is. There's the Jaffe coin. 